Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on General Hospital, Martin dumps Lucy, Alexis creates Spencer's obituary, and Sonny tells Dante about the latest attempt on his life. Sonny is on the phone with his head of security, telling them to investigate who attempted to take him out. Dante and Sam arrive, and Sam hugs Sonny. Unable to believe Spencer has left, Dante describes Spencer as one of a kind. Sonny inquires as to Alexis' well-being. Sam says she's getting right into work as usual. Sonny describes Trina as a wreck, and Ava is now with her. Dante inquires about the family vacation on the island, and Sonny responds that it had its moments. Sam resolves to check on her mother and will see Dante at home. Dante, alone, asks Sonny what's going on. Sonny can't believe Spencer's gone. Dante believes there is something else going on because he has extra security. Sonny says that someone nearly took him out on the island. Dante wants to assist him, and Sonny reveals he doesn't know who to trust anymore. Dante inquires if this was an inside job. Sonny updates Dante on what transpired. Dante believes they must question everyone close to him, no matter how much it hurts, and that everyone is guilty unless proven innocent. Gregory goes by Alex's office to inform her that he will be out for a few hours to meet with Tracy. He notices Alexis is not herself, and she informs him that her nephew Spencer has died. Alexis claims that if Esm had left town as planned, Spencer would still be alive. She blames herself for providing Esm with a job and an incentive to stay. Lucy asks a photographic assistant whether Martin has called, but she replies he hasn't. She decides to phone him when Scott arrives. Lucy hopes Scott has good news concerning Tracy. Scott acknowledges he hasn't spoken with her, so Lucy advises him to phone her. Scott calls Tracy, but she ignores him. Lucy believes Tracy is avoiding him because he abandoned her to console her the other day. Scott wonders if Martin is worth it, and Lucy answers yes, and they will work it out. Scott only wants her to be happy and comes too close, so Lucy backs away. She says she needs to go find Marty. Tracy notices Martin in the Metro Court, looking unhappy at the bar. She checks on him, but he isn't patient enough to listen to her allegations about Lucy and Scott without proof. Tracy tells him that the other day, when he and Lucy were fighting, Scott rushed to console Lucy, leaving her high and dry. She inquires as to whether they ended their relationship, but Martin responds that they did not. She cautions him that Lucy and Scott can't stay away from each other. Later, Lucy discovers Martin alone at the bar, but he insists on his privacy. Lucy cries, saying it's difficult to apologize if he doesn't return her calls. He observes that there isn't much to say, but Lucy responds that what she said was a slip of the tongue and that she loves him in the past, present, and future. She begs him for another opportunity. Martin looks over to Tracy, who is seated at a table. Lucy admits she has been distracted by Tracy. Martin claims this is about her turning away from him and relying on Scott when Bobby died. Lucy says that she, Scott, and Bobby have a complex history. Martin claims that whenever she needs solace, she turns to Scott, which has to say something about their relationship. She says that Bobby's death changed her, despite the fact that they never liked each other. Martin says that she was still important to her, and they got to know each other at their lowest points, which formed a bond. He understands that when that tie is severed, you look at your life and realize time is valuable and life is short, and you need to let go of what isn't working. She inquires whether he means they aren't working. Martin informs Lucy that whatever Scott is up to is more important than what they have. Martin claims he loves her more than any of his past spouses or ladies. However, he does not want to always worry what is going on and keep glancing over his shoulder, so goodbye. Lucy shouts, goodbye, and runs away in tears. Gregory arrives to meet Tracy and apologizes for being late. He notices she is watching Martin and Lucy, and he figures they are discussing what is holding him up. Tracy wonders what that would mean. Gregory tells that Spencer, Martin's great-nephew, was slain in Paris, along with Esme Prince. 
Tracy inquires about Alexis' well-being. He expresses grief and blames herself for taking a gamble on Esmond. Gregory believes Essen was attempting to be a better person, and he mourns the person she could have become. Gregory receives a call from his doctor, informing him that he has been referred to a specialist who would like to meet. He apologizes to Spencer and leaves. Tracy notices Martin sitting alone and approaches him. He requests to be left alone, but Tracy assures him that it will not take long and that she owes him the truth. Lucy comes to the deception offices in tears, and Scott wonders what happened. She claims Martin broke up with her and believes he deserves better. Scott holds Lucy while she cries. Lucy isn't sure why she continues screwing up relationships, but Scott believes she's being too hard on herself. He claims Martin is too ignorant to recognize her brilliance, so he ignores him. He claims she is the best Lucy Co. ever and pulls her in for a kiss. When Sam comes at the invader, Alexis says that she needs to write Spencer's obituary and that she is about to lose it if she has to allude to him in the past again. Sam understands how to make her mother smile by saying chupacabra, referring to an incident in which Heather Webbo was discovered hidden in the Windermere stables when Spencer was a child. They begin to ruminate on Spencer's wacky childhood pranks, and Alexis remarks that they now only have memories. Alexis understands Spencer's spoilt and superficial behavior as a child was a result of his being guarded, and as he grew older, he opened up and became a gift. Alexis reads her obituary and sobs, while Sam consoles her mother. At the motel, O'Neill is arrested, and Anna introduces Jagger to Jordan. Jagger says he now goes by the moniker John because he outgrown his previous nickname. He also informs them that they are meddling with his case, and his agents have previously advised Jordan to stay out of it. He claims neither of them are policemen anymore, so Jordan offers that he deputize them. Anna claims they were both present when Curtis was shot, so they cannot walk away. John reveals that Curtis' shooting is only part of something far larger. To satisfy them, John explains what is going on and reveals that the rifle used to shoot Curtis was part of a bigger arsenal stolen from the WSB, and used in crimes around the country. Anna requests that John get them in on this so that they may work together. John phones his bosses and learns that they have just blown his best leads since O'Neill refuses to speak without full immunity, something his supervisor would not approve of. He asks if they wish to help and if they received anything useful from the dealer. Anna confesses they learnt something, but they aren't just going to give him the information. She proposes an information exchange in which she offers everything she knows in exchange for his knowledge. Anna claims that Curtis was not the intended target, but rather Sonny. She claims Sonny believes whoever is after him is still trying. She notes that if they can provide information to Sonny, he may share it with them. John claims Sonny should have been imprisoned years ago. Anna informs him that Sonny is no longer the same man he knew, but John observes that no one has been able to keep Sonny under control. Anna claims she may be the first. Anna inquires once more about his thoughts on collaborative efforts. He said he hopes they have a good lawyer, because they have been arrested for interfering with a federal probe. Nicholas arrives to Laura's with Ace, having heard about Spencer. Laura takes him in and tells him how Spencer died. Nicholas blames himself for taking Ace. Laura puts Ace down and tells Nicholas that it's a good thing he returned home since he needs to be with his family right now. Nicholas expected her to smash the door in his face. Laura believes he understands that he should never have taken Ace, as it resulted in Spencer's death, and Nicholas agrees. Laura informs her son that he is not responsible. Esme is. Nicholas believes he has still put Spencer in Esme's crosshairs, and he does not know how she can look at him. She says he is her son, that she will always love him, and that he did the right thing by returning. Laura realizes he is not planning to remain. He cries because if he does, he will go to prison, and he cannot forsake his only son who needs him. Laura lashes out at her son, saying that if that is the kind of man and father he is, Ace would be better off without him. Nicholas is now aware of this, and he will leave Ace with her and Kevin before disappearing. 
Laura believes Ace deserves to be with his father and that he must confront his faults and accept responsibility for them. He can live a happy life with Ace. Nicholas replies, by going to prison. Laura encourages him that he must make this right. That atonement is the only way he can return to being the guy he once was. She begs him to try. They lost Spencer, and she does not want to lose him too. He wonders how she would feel if he still ran, and she says she would still love him, but she hopes he finds the resolve to return to the son he has abandoned. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.